The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our DocuAir version 6.9 webinar today. My name is Gary Sarlos, and I will be your presenter. I also have from the DocuAir team, John Langdon. He would be the Vice President of Production and Development and Joan Honig, who is our Product Marketing Manager. I would like to focus primarily on the product today, show you some of the uh, functionality that exists in DocuAir, and maybe talk a little bit about DocuAir in general. There's a few topics that I would like you to be aware of. Everybody can hear me okay. If you have any problems hearing me or you have anything that's urgent, let me know through the chat and we could address that immediately. Otherwise, once we're done with today's session, I'm going to open up everybody to question and answer so we could discuss anything that you may have not seen or any questions that you have in reference to the Fortis to DocuWare migrations or any product or anything like that. So what I want to do in this demo is I want to cover the web client. I want to introduce you to the DocuWare web client. I want to talk a little bit about how we capture and store documents in DocuWare, both manual and automated processes. I want you to see the document tray and file cabinet tools that we use in our web client. Then, of course, we'll progress to searching in DocuWare and we'll wrap up with a workflow process. So I'm going to introduce you to the web client, but before I do that, I just want you to be aware that when you move over to DocuWare now, you will be getting a system that is built around security, and we use a, a specific architecture in our design. It makes very userability easy to work with, the scalability of our system, you could go from anywhere and, and expand on that system, whether it's module or size, or to a, another level of our server additions, and we're also open for integrations in our system. So let me start by just opening up what we call our DocuWare web client. So what you're looking at here is the DocuWare web client. I'm logged into a user, and typically we have our document trays in our upper left-hand corner, and you could have multiple trays. They're a working environment before we commit our documents to the long-term archiving storage location. Our second tab is what we call document pool. That's just the name of a file cabinet. So if you have multiple file cabinets, you would have multiple dialogues to search through cabinets. If you have multiple cabinets, you as well can search through multiple cabinets on one search. That makes it easy if you're storing invoices in one cabinet and maybe purchase orders in another, tying those documents together in one search. The next tab would be our list tab. And these are uh, part of what we would use in a, in a workflow process. They're tasks for documents that need to be addressed. So they're basically pre-configured, pre-defined to help you find documents in a process. And then finally, our tasks are our specific workflow tasks. So if a document comes into DocuWare and it goes through a particular process, you'll find those documents in your tasks when that's part of your responsibility to address those documents. So very simple, those are the tabs across in the top left. Now we also have a settings option within our web client. This makes it easy for you to set your work environment to the best ability that you may be able to use DocuWare. So right now I'm looking at a document tray and if I have a document in my document tray, I could open up a document from my tray and open it up in my DocuWare viewer. 
And the reason I'm showing you this is because we have different options. I'm using this option because I have one screen. But many of our users, if they have multiple screens when they're using DocuWare, we have the ability in our viewer to set DocuWare and the viewer in the same window, open the DocuWare viewer in a separate window, or a DocuWare viewer along with the index dialog in that new window. So let me just show you what that would look like. If I switch over to that view, now DocuWare will be presented in my main web browser. If I go to my file cabinet, search for a document, when I retrieve this document now and open it, it will open up directly in a separate window in a viewer along with all my index information. So this makes it very easy if you're working in DocuWare and you need to maybe add some information into a field in DocuWare, you just simply click on wherever it is in the document you would like to find that information and shoot it right into your index fields and then you could save those changes. So be aware that it's very simple to configure the workstation the best for you to work within. I think for demo purposes I will leave it as is. Now there's all other options in there that I'm not going to go through all of those but you can set um, your trays and order of trays, set your default trays and when I refer to trays these are these temporary locations that we can put documents to pre-process before we store them into DocuWare. And you could control the searches you use if you have multiple searches but only use some occasionally. You could deactivate them and activate them when you need them to keep your work area nice and clean and neat. Same with your 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 so your lists within DocuWare. So if you have task lists that you don't use often, you could turn those off. And then also under the viewer, there are a lot of tools that I don't have active in my web client today, but those tools are always available as well. So let me come back to my tray. And if you have questions, hold on to those, and we'll certainly discuss those once we've complete the demo. Okay, so when I come into a basket in DocuWare, and I've already put a document into here, what we could do is, well, let me take a step back. To bring a document into DocuWare is very simple. On a manual process, you can either from your Windows Explorer, drag a document in, very simple, or if you like, we have an import button, and you could browse out to any network drive, local drive, highlight what you want to bring in, open, and it'll come directly in as well. So we have a couple different ways of bringing documents in manually. Automated, we have our import processes, we have a DW scan, a scanner that we could use to bring in paper images that I'll show you today. We have um, our DocuWare printer, which will take any document type and store that document directly into DocuWare as a PDF file. So we have a lot of different ways of, of bringing documents in. So what I want to show you, inside the tray, if I want to store a document, it's simple. Click on the document. Once the document's highlighted, we hit our store button. Here, we can index our document very simply. If I want to put my company information in, I highlight the data. If I want to put my doc type, I can either pull that from a word on a document quotation, or I could use my select list of all my different document types. And typically what we'll do is have these select lists for specific document types. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and put in quotation. Normally that is a predefined list and you may not even be able to add any other entries. Remember the security in DocuWare, 
we can limit or open up whatever you need to do to do your job. And then when we come to our document number, maybe we have a specific number that we store on air, we could bring that information in. And then just for my barcode, I'm just going to put my name in here so I could find this document easily when I search. So that's a way of storing. Now, if I don't want to store that document immediately, we also have the ability to just pre-index that document. So if I pre-index, what have I done? Now I've tied that data to this document, but I haven't committed it to my filing cabinet. So if I look at this document now, and I show my index entries, the data that I've put in now is tied to that document. If I need to add any more before I store the document, or if I need to add another document to that, I could certainly do that before I commit the document. We also have the ability in our tray to work further with our documents. We can do what we call an unstaple. Now what I do if I unstaple this document is basically separate it by pages. So this was a four page doc. I could separate it and now I have four separate documents. So we could we could work with these documents in different ways. I could bring additional pages, add them into these documents. I could go ahead and put these document back together, staple it. If I staple it, that means it will be one document. If I clip it, that means it will be four separate documents in this one record. So I'm going to go ahead and staple this document back together. So now it's one document. Now supposing all my index information still exists. Now I want to store the document, but I'm missing a document. So what I could do here is I could simply, now if that document has come in, and maybe it's a Word document, it's an offer sheet. I could drag that document right into my tray take my original doc, take my Word document. Now, we store our docs in any file types. If we wanted to convert that to a PDF, we could use our DocuWare printer. Or if I want to keep it as its original format, a Word document, I could do that. Now I could staple, or sorry, I could clip my document. Staples no longer available once we introduce another format outside of PDF. So now we clip our document, which is nice, because now we keep the integrity of both documents separate in this one record. So now at any time, I could unclip and save that integrity, or I could leave them clipped together, and now I'll feel this document is prepared for storage. So I'll go ahead and store this document now with my index information, if there was any other information, maybe the document date is today's date. I could simply type an X key for my current date. Maybe my due date on this is a month from now. So if we're working on due dates, I could change this to June for my 30 days. So now I have my due date set. June. 12th. So now we know I have 30 days to work with that document, and now I could just go ahead and store that document away. So that's, that's basic document tray work that I've showed you there. Now, if in fact I do want to find that document, I could simply come to my barcode field, which I tagged with my name. I could search, retrieve that document, open that document up. Now I have my result list with my document, and this is a four-page document in this record. And then also, I have a second file within this record, and this would be my Word document here, it's a document, and I could scroll through this multi-page document. Now, if I come back 
and reload my document. Now I'm in the first page of the first document. I'm going to introduce you to another world of tools that DocuWare has. These tools here are for our DocuWare viewer. If documents are in our viewer, we have the ability to annotate, stamp, uh, redact, uh, all different types of, of functionality within these documents. So simply if, if we want to put a text annotation on a document, you could set the color, the size, whatever you want to do here. Maybe I want to make it a little bit larger. And if I wanted to, I could put my text annotation anywhere on this document. Please review today. And now I could turn my text annotation off, save that annotation to the document. Now that, uh, that is tied to the document, but it's not a part of the document. At this point, it's a layer on the document. It could be simply turned off, simply turned back on. If we wanted to, we could merge that, those annotations onto that document to permanently tie them to that document. But in DocuWare's in DocuWare world, we typically leave those as layers of documents because we could set to security who could see those layers and if we want people to see them or not. And then if we want to simply take a document out of DocuWare, perhaps you want to email it out when you go to send it, you could send either just the document I'm looking at now, which is the PDF. I could send the entire file, or I could just send a page of a document. And you could always send them as a PDF with or without annotations or in their original format. And the last option as a hyperlink is if you're working with someone who has access in DocuWare to that document. So a lot of people like to use the hyperlink if it's a large document. You don't want to take it out of DocuWare to send it to somebody. It's easier to send them the link to it. As long as they have the rights, they have access to that document. We have display options here. We could set it. We could zoom. One of the things that people uh, really like in here uh, is our sharpening tools, our, our tools to uh, merge the layers. We also have a tool here that a lot of people like to use, our full text searching. We have binoculars and all different ways of zooming in here. So if I want to just find maybe a total on a document and it's hard to find it, you just simply zoom in on that area and it'll blow that directly up so it's very simple to find that area. And these tools are very simple to use, very easy to, to use. All right, so now let's just talk a little bit more about searching in DocuWare. So what we're looking at here, and I'll reset what I'm searching for, what we're looking at here is what we call a search dialog. And you could have multiple search dialogues based on your job. These are all customizable just as the fields are. So when you build yourself a cabinet or you have a cabinet in DocuWare, you define the fields. Then in your dialogues, you could define, design what fields you would like visible, maybe some hidden. In a lot of cases, maybe you only use two or three fields that you typically search on. You could build your own dialogues based on that, so you only search for specific fields, makes it very easy. Now, if I search and I don't put any criteria in, I will get back a result list with all the documents in my filing cabinets. So typically, once your cabinets grow, you're not going to do open searches, but my cabinet's not that large. So I could see here all the different documents. Now, again, same with what we here call our result lists. You'll have your fields in your result list displayed. And if there's a specific order that makes more sense to you, it's very simple to change that. So maybe my document number field is, is very important to me. 
or maybe my due date field is most important to me. I could simply take any field and drag it over where I would like it to be in my result list. And as long as you log out of the client, those changes that you make will be specifically stored for your user account. So you get it. You could design and use this client as best possible. Then if you want to search, you just simply click to sort, and it'll bring up all the documents based on dates. Same with doc type. If I want to go alphabetical, I could sort them that way. So there's a lot of ways that you could find exactly what you're looking for as well. Maybe I'm just looking for documents from a company called Leisure Park Mosier. Now, when I search, it'll only bring back those documents. But maybe that's too much. Maybe I don't want all those documents. Well, you just come in here now, and maybe what I want to do is look for a specific document type. It's only going to show me the document types that are tied to Leisure Park Mosier because we're filtering on that name. If I take my filter off, I would see all available document types. But by using our filtering, it makes it simple that if I'm looking for my price list, I will just go now and find my Leisure Park price list. As well, in our searches, we could use Boolean operators or different types of searching for distance searches. So maybe I'm looking for all documents from Leisure Park Motor or maybe Flying Tom Germany. So based on that, you can always search for multiple type documents. Well, didn't find anything. I might have used the wrong operator. But nevertheless, yeah, because I didn't put my quotes around it. But nevertheless, you have all those other options. So that is what I want to explain about the capture in the store, the document trays in the cabinets, some of the tools, the searching options. So now for the next 10 minutes, I'd like to go through our workflow process or a sample workflow process so you see how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my document tray, and you can see I have two trays. I have one called Intelligent Indexing and one called Basket. My Basket is my document tray that I don't use something called Intelligent Indexing on. And that's a capture tool in DocuWare that will learn your documents and index your documents for you automatically. So to begin this process that I want to focus on right now, I'm going to use what we call our DocuWare Scan. And this is part of our DocuWare desktop apps. And this is a scan process using a local scanner. And I have a template applied so I could batch scan. And when I batch scan my documents in, I have a barcode affixed on the first page of each document. So every time I have a new doc, I put a barcode on for the purpose of separating my documents so I can batch scan them in. Now, this is for local scanners. We have something called DocuWare Import that we use for network devices. So if you have MFPs that you scan and you do a lot of batch scanning, we would, rather than use our local scan, DW scan tool, we would use our import tool, which will monitor any hot folders that you scan to, and then process those documents however we need to separate, index, whatever we're doing with those documents. So for the scan process, what I'm simulating is putting a batch of documents into my scanner, which is tied to this application. Once I hit scan, it's going to bring all my documents in. And it's going to run through these documents. And what it's doing right now is basically recognizing any barcode. If it finds barcode, it could populate fields with that data 
Maybe we're tying that to an external data source and using that as our match code to synchronize data. Or in this case, we're simply just using it to separate. So now our documents will stay exactly as they were when we scan them in. So it's basically telling me that it scanned that batch in and split that into four parts. So now if I come over to my intelligent indexing tray, these documents will be imported directly in. And once they come in, what we have is our intelligent indexing service looking at these documents. And we either have a cloud-based or an internal, what we call intelligent indexing tool, that basically learns your documents and prepares these with index information. Here, we have gotten what we call a confidence level bar in the upper left corner of each document. Each document here has either a green or, or orange confidence level. Green is typically very confident. It's seen the document numerous times. It kind of knows what indexing you're looking for. Yellow or amber means it's seen the document before. It just wants me to confirm again before it says, OK, I'm fully confident. And if it's never seen your document before, it would typically come back with a red suggestion for indexing. You change that or correct that, and then the next time, it will remember what you set it to. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I take this document here and I store it, it's telling me it's seen this document before. It knows the document type is an invoice in. If I look here, it got my document number up here from my invoice number, it got my date from my invoice date, it got my amount from down here, looking at the invoice total. So it knows a bit about this document. It's got the due date here tied to the payment, but what it didn't get is the company name. So if I come over here, I'll simply select storage experts, bring that in. Now, I'm confident this is the correct data. When I store this document now, that document will be indexed the next time it sees it with that company name automatically, because it will remember that. The rest of my documents, it's already seen. So it's pretty confident with these. So a lot of times, people will just go ahead and use the store automatically option, which you're basically taking any quality check out and storing them directly into the file cabinet without looking at the index information. Or I could highlight them, and now I could store and check, verify. Yes, it's a phone wizard. It's definitely an invoice. It's got my document number. So this document it's learned pretty well. It's got my total. So it tells me here where all my info is coming from. I could store it. And now this could become a rapid process if you're doing this often. Yes, I know that's all good. I see the confidence level. And I'll just go ahead and store the rest of these documents. So now when these documents come into our file cabinets, we have what we call trigger conditions to put documents into workflows. So we have an AP workflow process here. It's an invoicing process. And when these documents come in, based how we flag those documents, they trigger directly into a workflow. So what they're doing right now is basically triggering into a workflow. Now, if I come over here and look at my tasks as the accounting manager, when my tasks come up, I can see what I have to do. I have four documents in here, and I have to assign the cost center to each of these documents. So typically, in a paper environment, I would open up my invoices 
I would look at who they would go to and I would mail them out to customers here. I'll just scan them directly in and kick them directly into a workflow. Now, in my workflow process, if I want to look at an invoice and assign it, we have our workflow built where anybody in the accounting department can assign these documents out. And when they assign them out, we're calling them course center managers or who are responsible to review and make a decision on payment of these invoices. So we can do parallel tasking here, and maybe I'll send this out to multiple course centers. So I could take this and send this out to multiple course centers, and it'll move that document out to those course center managers. Now my next document is for U.S. Steel. Now I'm going to go ahead and assign this document to the manufacturing department because I know he purchased these. But I also have built into my workflow and the ability to set levels based on amount of invoices. So in this case, this is a million dollar invoice. So I'm going to go ahead and assign it to the proper course center. But the difference is, even if that course center manager approves that, built in the workflow, it would have to go to my CFO for approval as a second level before it would come back to me in the accounting department to make payment. Then I have a rapid transport, and again, I will assign this to my manufacturing manager and get that document out. And finally, I have a storage experts, and just for demo purposes, I'm going to assign this one also to my manufacturing manager. So basically, I've assigned all my invoices to him. Just one of them, I also assigned it to another department, and one of them is over that criteria to come back to accounting if it's approved, until the CFO approves it. And that's what we call our form fields or our stamping processes. We can put stamps directly on the document as a visual. So now when you look at the document, it has a visual audit trail, but everything is logged as well in DocuWare so we can get reporting off that. So at this point, our accounting department has done their job. They've processed any incoming invoices for the day. So what I want to do is I just want to bounce over to a user called Brian Ford. And Brian Ford, believe it or not, is the manufacturing manager. So when I sign in to Brian Ford's account, if I look in his web client, what do you think? I have all four of those tasks here. And they all are saying check invoice because that's his task. But one of the things that DocuWare also will do is based on that information, it will send email out and let you know. So if, you're, if your managers that need to look at these documents aren't always in DocuWare, we will trigger email notifications, which I've done here. I've sent a notification for every one of these invoices that have went out to him. And now he could get these right through his email on his mobile device. And then, of course, we have our DocuWare mobile apps where he could go ahead and process his workflows right through our DocuWare mobile app. So he could be on a conference call in a, in a parking lot working on his smartphone and, and doing his job based on email alerts and DocuWare mobile applications. So maybe I notice U.S. Steel, I want to get this one paid right away because I want to keep a good relationship with this organization because I get good pricing on my roller coaster parts. So what I could do from my email is I could click on the link which would take me directly to that particular invoice. So here, if 
I open this up, it'll open up right directly in my browser and I could process this document. So I could go ahead and maybe I'm good with this. I want to approve this amount and take that invoice and process it through. Now you see, if I come back to my mail, if I come back to my storage experts, I could also click here on my workflow task link. And in my link, this will bring me to my tasks. Me personally, I love this view because if I have multiple documents I have to refer to, rather than click the link and just get that one invoice in this circumstance, I could get all my tasks listed and now I could process these in minutes. I could see that Jenkins, my accounting manager sent this over to me. It does belong to my cost center. I would like to see this paid. I could approve it. Now my next invoice here once this finishes processing. My next invoice here will come up, and this one I could see that was assigned to multiple. Let me just refresh the screen. Um, I could see that this one was assigned to multiple cost centers. So here, I could have had my workflow calculate what I owe. Maybe I know I owe 40% of this. Jenkins could have put a note on here what I'm responsible for, but let's just say I know that I'm responsible for $400. I could go ahead and I could put an annotation on this document and say uh, I am covering 400 on my note and then when I put my stamp on here it's also going to indicate that I'm covering $400 of that document. So that one's now on its way. So now from my manager's perspective for manufacturing I have one more, more invoice here and maybe this one my rapid transport doesn't look like my invoice. So this one I'll just go ahead and reject and for my reason, I could put whatever I want, but this is correct. I do not believe this is my cost center, so I'm going to confirm that and move that document down. So now, basically, I have no tasks. I'm going to go back over to my Jenkins user. sign in and now what you'll see are the documents that are now ready for me to work with. I have one document to assign to a cost center. Why is that? If I look at that document here I could see that it was not Ford's cost center. He rejected it. My mistake. Very easy to rectify. I send it to the proper department. The other document is going to be ready for payment. So my pay invoice document here is set. It was approved by Brian Ford for the full amount. I could pay it. I could either pay it and make note in DocuWare or this book is part of our workflow where we're using web services to kick this information out to our accounting system and maybe I'll just go ahead and indicate that it was assigned to cost center 21,000 which is my manufacturing and go ahead and make payment. And now that invoice is taken care of. So any other documents now are still out there but they are not ready for the accounting department to work with them. But what we could do 
if you're concerned and need to track where those documents are in the process, we have the ability to assign all tasks to a user. So what I've done is assign all tasks to Jenkins, which means not only her tasks will be available, but all tasks. So now she can see where these documents are. She can see that the document for U.S. Steel was approved by Ford, but it's waiting for the CFO approval level. We also see that we have an invoice here that Brian Ford has already paid his 400, but we know we're waiting on the cost center manager in sales, Fred Winter, to approve that before it could be paid. And we also know that this particular invoice was rejected by Brian Ford, and now we know it's in the sales department, Fred Winter's responsibility. So that's a, a view of a simple AP workflow process that we have configured here for the demonstration. We have the ability to escalate in here. We have the ability not only to parallel task, but reroute based on people's availability, either by hours or by out of office indications. So our workflows can be built specifically to the way you do work in your organization, any just about way that you could possibly think of. So that was a mouthful. I ran a little bit longer than I wanted to, but sometimes I get excited to show a lot of these capabilities of DocuWare, and there are a lot more, but I wanted to touch on a lot of the highlights. I hope that this demonstration gave you a good feel, an idea, an understanding of how DocuWare works. And now, if you do start using your Fortis to DocuWare migration tools and start using DocuWare, switching over to DocuWare, you're going to find that all the capabilities you have in Fortis are here. Uh, and there is even an expansion on some other tools, such as our capturing tools, our automation tools. Uh, we have a forms package. You saw the workflow processes. There's, there's a whole array. I didn't even show you Smart Connect. Um, there's a lot of different things that you could do in DocuWare outside of what you've seen today. So that being said, what I would like to do is now review web client we saw. I didn't show you the Windows Explorer client, but we do have a second client that is more of a folders view. It looks like a Windows Explorer, but you're using the DocuWare security rather than using network security where these images are. The Capture and Store, I showed you some of the manual and some of the automated using the DW scan the document tray and file cabinet tools, all kinds of opportunities to work with these documents. Remember, you could store documents in any file format and always open them in our DocuWare viewer. We could handle over 350 different file types, or you could always open them up right from the file cabinet in your native applications. For instance, if it's a Word doc, you could open it up and edit it, work in it, in Word right from our filing cabinets, searching capabilities, and the workflow. So what I would like to do now is maybe hear from you. So we're going to now open up some time for any migration questions, product and development questions, and of course, as always, thank you for attending our webinar. So let me see if I could make this happen here. I can unmute everybody. Okay. I do believe I have unmuted everyone. Um, sounds clear. Just heard a little bit of feedback. John, I believe you're still on the line with us. 
Joan, Joan is also still on the line with us. So if anybody has any questions or comments or, you know, anything you want to share, uh, we have about as long as we need, let's say, to discuss those. So I know you're out there, Michael, Lena, Christine, Darlene. What do you think? Anyone? I have a question. Sorry, it looks like I had to mute Christine because we're getting some feedback from uh, her line. Christine, if you have questions, just please send them through the, the chat. I'm sorry, was it was it Michael that had the question? Michael, yeah, you should still be able to talk, I believe. Uh, actually, this is Seth. I'm with Darlene. Okay. Um, okay. You talked about um, stapling and clipping. Is it possible if you have two different documents, two different formats, to convert? like convert a Word document to a PDF and then staple it? Sure, absolutely. You could convert, staple, clip, rearrange. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of people like to store uh, their images as PDF documents, even though they may not originally be PDFs. So it's a simple conversion process. Okay, and then another question. Right now with Fortis, the, the in-baskets are actually um, folders, network folders, so we're able to have our fax machine send documents into a network folder and then import it in. Is there something similar here? Yes, yeah, Seth, it works very similar, similarly in DocuWare. Um, what you would use is a component that we call DocuWare import, so you could have your fax sent to um, to a folder, and then Docuware Import automatically recognizes that um, there's a document there and sends it to um, sends it to a to a folder uh, or a doc tray um, in Docuware. And it actually has a lot of intelligence in it, so it can do things like um, figure out, you know, based on the content of the facts, uh, maybe it goes to to one um, one document tray if it's a certain type of of communication versus another several rules you can set up there but in the most simple form you can certainly have um, just a folder watched and all the documents that go to that folder go to a document track. Gotcha. Okay, good. So how, how's everybody feeling about the migration? This is version 6.9 which now has the migration tools in there. So we're prepared is anybody out there prepared to do some Fortis to DocuWare migration at this time? Oh, so yeah, as I understand it, we're on an older version of Fortis, so first we need to upgrade to the latest version of Fortis and then over to DocuWare? That's true. To take advantage of what the tools. Yeah. Uh, and you know, what we've recently done is aligned the Fortis version numbers with the DocuWare version numbers. So the Fortis version numbers, uh, we just released uh, Fortis version 6.9, and it's got some tools in there um, to do the migration to DocuWare. Also, another nice thing about um, the version 6.9, and in terms of the migration, is that there are some tools there that allow you to just test out DocuWare before you even do a production migration. You could take, let's say, 500 documents. That maybe is a big, uh, big test, but enough to, to kind of get a feel for the system. Um, you could take 500 documents, just run a, a search, a query, and move those to, um, to a trial account that we have. Now, DocuWare has on-premise, just like Fortis. It also has a cloud option where you can use um, DocuWare um, completely web-based in, uh, in our servers from our, our data center. Um, the trial version of DocuWare is all in our cloud as well. The nice thing about the trial is you don't have to set anything up um, for a DocuWare server uh, on your side to do some just testing, getting a feel for how your documents will work in DocuWare. So um, 
just as another benefit of upgrading to four to six nine is that you'll be able to do that that just trial of DocuWare. You don't have to set any DocuWare servers up to get a um, to get a feel for it and start um, playing with DocuWare for um, for yourself. Okay, a question about conversion. If we have a, we have local, Ford is local now. If we were going to the cloud-based DocuWare and we have, say, a terabyte of documents already, is there a way to get those to you without uploading them through the Internet during a conversion? Yeah, we do have a procedure for, um, for sending them directly to our data center. So if, um, you know, a terabyte... If you look at the time of copying the the data all to a hard drive and then shipping time and uploading time, a terabyte terabytes about at the break even point uh, of um, you know a decent internet connection and just doing an upload um, via via um, you know just a file transfer. But it certainly is a process for doing that. Um, our data center is Microsoft Azure. Uh, is the back end and they've got um, a special process for doing that all the data has to be encrypted um, when it's sent on the hard drive and uh, we've just got a process for doing that if you if you're thinking about going that way you can either contact your partner or you can contact Fortisales at DocuWare.com and we can get you some more information on exactly what that that process entails but the answer is yes absolutely um, you know there's a, a method for getting um, you know, large sets of data into the cloud without just doing a, a file transfer upload. All right, thank you. Great, great questions. All right, well, that's all my questions. Yep. Okay, Lena, Darlene, you're good. No other questions. No. Nope. Pat. Still there, Pat? All right, if there are no other questions, we could call this a wrap. I've added my email address to the bottom of this slide. So if you have any questions or, or comments or you need any information, you can certainly email me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with any type of uh, answers that you're looking for. All right, thank you. All right, I hope everybody uh, got what you wanted to out of this webinar, uh, you know, if not, certainly let me know. All right? Yep, thanks. Great. All right, everybody have a good afternoon. All right, bye. Thank you, John. Joan? Bye, Gary. All right, bye.